All right, everybody, welcome to today's Tech Talk Tuesday. And today's video, we're gonna talk about the wiring process of the Dakota Digital RTX gauges in my Dodge Challenger. Now, when I had originally started to plan out this video, I planned on filming the whole process while I was doing all the wiring, running all the lines and everything. But then it ended up being so simple and taking such little time that I was like, wow, this, this is really an easy process to do. Now, there are a couple of caveats with the wiring, so we'll go ahead and I'll show you a couple of pictures that I took after I got things buttoned up because it just worked out so really quickly and well, I was blown away by it. Um, one of the things that I dread most on working on cars, of course, is electrical work. I'm not an electrician, I'm not an electrical engineer, and it's just something that I personally don't care for. It's one of my weak points. But that being said, I'm confident enough that I can go ahead and work on these older cars with their wiring. And Dakota Digital makes their setup so simple and so straightforward, it's really mind blowing. I, I was dreading the wiring part of this and uh, I shouldn't have because it was that simple and straightforward. Now, one caveat is the Dakota Digital system, while fairly complete, is not 100% complete for doing the wiring. And I'll go ahead and explain that as we go ahead and move forward in this video. But they do come with the majority of the stuff that you're gonna need. So for starters, the brain box uh, is a little control module that has uh, all the wiring going to it from all the sensors and then has all the outputs going to the cluster itself. And uh, you have to find a place to mount that. That was the hardest process, part of the process was finding a good location to mount the brain box. And uh, I finally found a place uh, up on above the parking brake on the driver's side. And uh, it was a tight fit, but I did get it up in there and it worked out perfectly. Now, I did a test fit, make sure the box fit up there, got the uh, holes drilled for it to be mounted. And then I removed it from there so that way I could connect all the wires, got all the wiring, taken care of and then put it back up in place into the final mounting. And it worked out really well. Uh, the wiring was super straightforward. The kit comes with uh, new sensors for your water temperature, your oil pressure and the speedometer. And one of the nice things I found at least on my small block Mopar was the water temperature sensor threads as well as the oil pressure were the same pitch as the OEM sensors. And so I didn't have to use any of the adapter fittings that the kit came with. I was able to just remove the old fittings, put in the new fittings and call it a day. And then with the speedometer, you just remove the speedometer cable, attach their speed sensor to it, and then the harness just plugs right into it. And then I just routed the new harnesses that they came with right along the paths of the factory harnesses or the factory speedometer cable in case of the speedo and everything just worked out really clean and simple. And then there's only a couple of wires for each of them. Um, you have three wires for one, two wires for another and four for the final one. And they're all labeled on the brain box, which ones go where and it's pretty foolproof. And you almost have to try to screw up wiring the car up. Now, one thing I didn't do in case I want to move the brain box later was I did not cut the harnesses shorter. I left them long and then just coiled up the wires and pushed, tucked them up out of the way. So that way, if I decide I want the brain box in another location at a later date, I can go ahead and do so. Now, I have heard of people attaching the brain box to the dash itself. The reason I didn't do that was because if I want to take the dash out, I now have to disconnect every single one of those wires. Granted, it's not much, it's less than a dozen wires, uh, but still, it's ad additional work if you have the brain box attached to the dash to be able to remove the dash. So I just left it attached to the body. Uh, they have in the instructions, don't put it on the firewall close to where the distributor is because you can get some feedback and it can interfere with how things work. That's why I went ahead and put it up on the side. And it's so far, everything seems to be working out really well from that standpoint. Now, from here, there are some wires that it doesn't come with, which is not a big deal, but it's something you need to be aware of is that you are gonna need to get some additional wires in case you don't have wire laying around at your place. And they have, and those wires that you need are for the tachometer uh, input, a 12 volt source that it with the key on and a 12 volt constant source and then a pair of wires to run to the fuel tank for the fuel gauge 
So these wires you need to get, oh, and a chassis ground. Almost forgot the ground. So you need to go ahead and get these wires. And what's nice is what I did was on the brain box, each of these uh, wires that you have to add, the ports are labeled in different colors. So the tack is labeled green. So I ran a green wire from the brain box to the negative terminal on the coil. The 12 volt constant is yellow. So I ran a yellow wire to that. And then the 12 volt key on is red. So I ran a red wire for that. Now, historically I'm used to the 12 volt key on being uh, yellow and the 12 volt constant being red. Uh, but because the brain box was labeled the opposite direction, I went ahead and kept it that way. Just that way if I trace the wires back, there's no confusion. Um, but of course there's just gonna be the initial confusion when I first look at it and be like, why is that one yellow and red when they should be the opposite? But I digress. Uh, and then of course the ground was, I made that as a black wire. And then for the fuel level, personally, I went ahead and I wanted different colors than um, the other stuff that I had in there. So I went with a white and a blue wire. Uh, this is where things get a little uh, interesting because on the Mopars, you don't have, at least on the stock tanks, you don't have a bolt on the fuel sender. They are held in with a retaining clamp. And so, uh, they have you send two wires to the fuel sender, one to attach to the fuel sender itself and one as a ground that you're supposed to ground to the fuel sending body, which they recommend taking a bolt off and attaching it there. Well, we don't have those on the Mopar, so I just went ahead and found a way to attach it to the sender itself. And um, so that's uh, the, the only real challenges on that. Um, there was one additional wire that I had to run uh, that was so that way when you turn the headlights on the dash lights turn on as well and so that one you have to go ahead and splice into the tail light harness is what they recommend and so that's what i went ahead and did i found the wire in the factory tail light harness that uh sends the hot power to the tail lights when you flip the headlights on and so i just tapped into that um, that's really the only place that you had to deal with uh, a major cut into the factory harness. Um, there were a couple of other small splices you have to do under the dash, and that's for the left turn signal, the right turn signal, and then the brake warning light. You do have to tap into those as well. And you have two options for the blinkers and the brake warning light. You can either run the leads from the factory harness to the brain box, and then they display on the speedometer, or they come with these, uh, little pigtails that you can run and have those three lights in their factory locations in the dash. And so that's what I opted to do in this case, since I've got a left right blinker and a park warning light lights already in the dash, I went ahead and ran it to those. So that way it still has that stock feel when you're out driving around. Um, but other than that, the wiring is super basic. I mean, like I said, everything is plug and play. The brain box is labeled. Uh, with where all the things go that you put into it and it makes it very challenging to screw up uh, The instruction manual that comes with is super detailed and is really top-notch I mean it didn't take more than a couple of hours to go ahead and do the entire wiring and I was just taking my time because I am so um, Reluctant in my conf I'm so lacking in my confidence on wiring that I just wanted to make sure I did everything right, triple checked everything, and it turned out beautiful, and I couldn't be happier. So hats off to Dakota Digital for putting together such an amazing product and something that's so simple to go ahead and do. I, when you get the setup and you look at everything, at first glance, it looks daunting if you're not super well-versed in electronics and wiring, but trust me, if I can do it, you guys can do it as well, and it just works out really well. I mean, like I said at the beginning, the hardest part of this entire process was figuring out the proper location to mount the brain box for what I was comfortable with. I'm still not super pleased with where I put it, but it gets the job done, everything works, and I couldn't be happier at this point with the whole setup. I doubt I'll move the brain box later, but at the same time, I left the harnesses long enough that if I decide to do so, 
I can. So I hope you found this information useful as always. If you've been following along with the dash restoration project on this car, uh, we've got another one to go after this. We're gonna go through the configuration of the gauges in these car, and you're gonna to wanna to stick around and see that process because uh, it's one of those things, again, like the wiring, it looks super daunting. You're trying to figure out how this is all gonna work with a simple toggle switch, but then when you actually step into it, it actually works pretty well. So go ahead, smash that like button if you liked today's video. It helps me out tremendously with that YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell as well so that way YouTube will keep you up to date of all the videos that I do in the future. And as always guys, I will see you the next video.